saying that he died by selling drugs, right? If you do sell drugs in the projects, you're selling rocks. You're not selling shit on balloons, which is carga, with the shit, you know, heroin. Ain't nobody in the project be selling heroin around here. You sell rocks. They said my homeboy got busted with heroin, you know, balloon, shit and balloons. My homeboy never sold no nothing on balloons. If he was selling anything, it was shit with rocks, you know, it was rocks, which is where everybody smokes in the projects. Anywhere, anywhere you go, it's, it's, it's rocks. So how in the hell can you be selling rocks, run from the hooda, swallow the shit, and they find balloons in your ass? Even when you're, you know, you're choking, you're dying, they find balloons next to your body. There ain't no way, no how. It was a setup. They were covering their tracks. My homeboy got killed by the hoodas, regardless of what they say. You know? The cops are trying to justify what they did wrong. They know that this man had no drugs, but yet they put it in his mouth just to set him up. And uh, all we want is fairness. We want Justice. our rights. And they got to go to jail for what they did. Hey, you got our run backs coming. Don't trip. The motherfuckers know better. The they police got a 187 on the motherfucking ass. If it's not the enemy killing us, it's the cop. And that's the biggest enemy right there. It feels good to know that all his friends are here. And yeah, we made a lot of money for the car wash, but why? Why did we you know, have to leave for his time? Why couldn't it have been a fundraiser for some, some of these guys to, you know, for college or something? You know, they're smart. You're telling one thing right now, what would you tell 
fuck them, fuck them up. They killed our homie. If they want to do that, we go two for one. And who think you lose? Not me. We wish they would tell us like anybody else. You know what? We got a war going with you. Kick some shit off, I guarantee you they would lose. They pack what, nines? That's the biggest gun they can pack. That's the smallest one we can pack. Was wrong, and they know that, and that's why they're not stopping harassing nobody. But if there was on another day, they would have came and harassed all of us. But see, something happened, which they know was totally wrong, and they don't want to. They don't want to admit it, and it was totally wrong what they done, and they will. It, it all is karma. It's all gonna flash back on them. They think they can take us out, but they ain't, man. We don't die. We just multiply. You see, we're hanging on the parking lot, saying goodbye to a homie. What kind of fucking bullshit is that? He's dead. We ain't never gonna see him again. Just, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, oh, okay, the homie's dead. Okay, let's go drink some beer in the fucking parking lot. That don't mean shit. We ain't, we ain't never gonna see him again. We ain't never gonna see the smile. Telling him, hey fool, let's kick it. What the fuck? What's so right there? Demon. Man, we just you know what we got? Oh, oh, <laughs> Whether you work, whether you don't, you still a gang member. Bill Clinton, he's a gangster. <laughs> Shit, getting hey, blowjobs in the White House, <laughs> smoking weed, yeah, somebody he didn't hell. Yeah. There's a lot of people that label gang members as, as just gang members, no lives. You know, come from the ghetto and stuff, but it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's your ranchero dog right there. This is my fucking life, and I'm stuck this way. No matter what I do, go to college, work, whatever, I'm still stuck here. Like I said, that, that's why I'm a gangster right here. That's the definition. Motherfucker's out here no matter what he got. More and more people get educated up here, you know what I mean? And people start thinking of other things besides killing each other. There's a lot more than that. I ain't gonna stop banging till day nine. <laughs> and they can't say we're fucking low land, fucking old cars, houses, all that shit. Yo, I've been game banging since I'm nine years old, homie. Go to college and I'll give a fuck. Fuck you. Show me cheese. Hey, get this right here. You wanna call that Japanese bamboo ready? Hey, hey, this is a normal life in the projects, homie. That's normal. Two operations. The motherfucking chest too. The 44 Magnum hole. That's a soldier, right there. Hey, where's your bullet holes? You got bullet holes? You don't got shit. File, dog. Where for cops? That's a soldier right there. Hey, dog, show them the tank back of the head, dog. Show them that RSP, dog. Show them your head, dog. That's RSP right We're there. We're for combat tonight, baby. And look, he's suiting yeah, the bullet. Baby. Take a picture of that. Okay. Yeah, oh, baby. How's that, fool? That says, fuck the system. We don't give a fuck about them food. Big pirate, uh, little pirate right here. You want to show his bullet hole, he got to pop his eye out. Bang! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how long, how long you been banging? A while, homie. Since you was born, damn near. Baby, bro. It's an like L.S. gang, homie. All his, all his uncles, his, you know, all his family, they Bond been from show. the ranch. He That's had no, right. you know what I mean? That's right, homie. Just, since she was born, he was from the ranch. He was born a ranchero. And the same thing goes for a lot of these little youngsters right here. You tell them. You know, if, if I can do things for you, and keep you the fuck out of here, you better off. Because, I mean, ain't nobody got to fucking die right here. Fucking 20 years old, fucking die in the parking lot. Oh, shit. And Jesus wants to give you rest. Jesus wants to give you peace. There's an answer, friend. His name is Jesus. Really, there's no secular answer for what's taking place because the police can't seem to get a handle on it. Some of the help agencies, they work hard, but they can't seem to really give them an answer. But we feel that the answer that we have is really making a difference because it's something that happens inside of our hearts. Uh, a lot of violence has been occurring here in the housing project recently. That's why you hear us out here preaching and passing flyers and trying to work with people. Uh, but we feel like it's going to turn around as long as we keep on pushing and keep on doing the right things, uh, uh, even though there's a lot of hatred and adverse uh, publicity taking place. And if you want to be from my neighborhood, you got to be crazy. And if you ain't crazy, you can't prove it, you don't belong in my neighborhood. And that's what we are, locals.
we have a dead friend here. You know what I mean? He's gone. We'll never see him. And we can't bring him back. I mean, but we want justice to be done. We want them to go to jail just like any other person who commits a crime. If we commit a crime, we go to jail. They're no different than us. Okay, except if they have a badge and the law is behind them. But you know, they're crooked. People know they're crooked and nobody wants to stand up for the right. Demon, that's it. Fuck! Fuck the cop, fool! Arty Locals Gang! Interview him. That's what they're doing to us. They're destroying us. Fuck oh, off, man! Demon! Hey, Al, get up in here! Hey, Al, get up in here! They call me Willie from Vado Nuevo, and I'm gonna let you know about life as I see it. They call me Ayes, I'm from South San Diego, been being in five, almost six years now. I'm just here to let you know it hasn't been all good. You guys might want to think of it another way. What hood y'all from? South San Diego. South San Diego. What about you? Me? I'm from Vado Nuevo. Where's that at? Where's That's that in East LA. East LA? Okay. How long have you been banging? How long have you been banging? 15? 16? 9 years? 16? 25 now? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 9 years? You've been banging? December, December 24th, well, yeah, about, no, nine years. Nine years? To be exact. Okay. What about you? How long you been banging? Five, six years. You got, you'll never stop banging? I don't bang, but if you hit me up, I'm from my neighborhood. I'm from Vada Nova Strata Courts. So you basically... You even though you don't bang, you, you, you feel like you gotta represent the neighborhood to the fullest. It's just oh yeah. Always. Oh, so that's my lifestyle, that's all I know. I know better. That's, your friend. that's why that's just a place to go kick it and party. Uh -huh. I did my time, it's, it's all over it. But I got it all over me. Let me ask you why I rank out. Why did you why did you stop banging? What made you stop? I didn't stop. Banging, as in banging, is that's for the youngsters. Gangsters, my my generation was the last generation of gangsters. Uh -huh. That's banging. I, I noticed uh, you you in a t-shirt. You got a lot of tattoos. Can you explain to some of us uh, out there what they are, what they mean? And that's just different times I thought about something and wrote it down. So what's the majority? I see the, the two the two pictures right here. <laughs> the majority there. is my neighborhood. There's so many foul oh, being Ah. Uh, that's all it is. The majority is my neighborhood. And my kids and my kids' mom. That's all I think about. My neighborhood, my kids, my kids' mom. I can barely see it. Pull it all the way up. That stands for V and E? It's not finished. Okay. But what's it gonna say when you that's that's the V a uh, N and there's an E over here. Okay. Good. Okay, let me ask you this. If somebody wanted to My be kids. Okay. My kids. <laughs> what I did was all the tattoos is Everything I think of, I'm tired of writing. Okay. But I want to write. I want something with my kids' names or my neighborhood's name. Okay. Something crazy. Right. 
What about you? Uh, you got any tattoos? Got a couple. Uh, my mom's name. Oh, mama. I got mama, Linda. too. Deck of cars, Ace of Spades. They call me Ace. San Diego on my chest. Jester on my back. Let me see that shit. That's a little one on my chest. Let me see it, Don. What? That's San Diego. That I did it. Oh, I see it. That's right, Don. Oh, that's, that's yeah. San Diego? Yeah. Okay. Just from my back. Let me ask you this. If I was an employer about to give you a job and you rolled up and you got all these tattoos. I wouldn't dress like this. But do you think, what if he sees the tattoos? He's already seen them. He might but but he might that's discrimination. He might that's, be scared of That's you. discrimination. That's discrimination. I'm tattooed crippled. Oh, that's discrimination. Don't fuck with me. I'm paralyzed, I get $600 a month. Where am I supposed to live? They won't live in the ghetto? What am I gonna do with $600? I'm trying to get a job, and you little side government fuckers is 600. 600? What the hell? I'm gonna do with 600, Don. Huh? So because you're in a wheelchair, they give you $600 a month. You, you think that should be increased? And if you think this should be increased, how much? Yeah, you just give a motherfucker 2500 a month. So that's at least what he can make, even doing this trying Without a currency, they burn. Give every homeless a house. Too much rent, do something. Else the world wouldn't be fucked up like it is. Don't burn the money, just give them something to fucking... Give them a house. They burning houses, million houses a day. I want a mansion. Mansion. Oh yeah, dude, that's no way to live. Uh -huh. 600 a month. You can't even fucking work. You can't pay the fucking first. You can't pay the rent. Six hundred dollars a month from the government don't do shit. Hey, let me ask you this question. Have you ever been to jail? Yeah, I've been to jail, but it's like detox and stuff like that. Nothing really serious. I'm pretty much, I get out of shit. Okay. I've done my dirt somehow. I don't know how the fuck I've ever been locked up. Honestly, it's pretty much, that's why people You see that sun shining? That's who was watching. I'm fucked. The evil comes out at night. I get out of shit. I don't know how. Okay. What about you? Have you ever been to jail? <laughs> That's like a damn. That's like that too. Times, dude, like twenty. Being honest, the hoodas are laughing on this shit. <laughs> Have I been in jail? Yeah. Yeah. Man, a lot of times. Okay. Too many. What about prison? You got the bob and weave, duck and dodge. It's, it's, I missed all that. I missed it. Yeah. Did it, but missed it. Just straight. Let me ask you this question. What's the difference from banging in, in jail, being a gang member in jail, and being a gang member on the street? What's the difference? Everybody always talking about it's a difference. What's, what is that? There's no, there's no neighborhoods in the town. You go in there, it's, it's one thing or the other. You either fucking... You hang with the raza, because you're from a uh, raza barrio. You bitch out and get punked. You just stick with your own. So is it blacks against whites yep. and blacks against Mexicans? Or how is that? It's just, 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 it's
but from how I hear from the homies. Okay, I want you to tell me a, like a bad experience that uh, happened to you as a result of you being a, uh, a gang member. Like one time on my birthday, it was about 11.30, my birthday is July 1st, I was turning 20, and I seen a gang of hyenas over at the party. I took my mom's new car out to San Bernardino. <laughs> I need to say that. I was out there talking to them for about three minutes, so all of a sudden I seen a few heads hop out and they looked at my clock. I'd say it was probably about five minutes until the day I turned 20. All of a sudden they unloaded about 10, 12 rounds. Hit the car four times, all up in the door where I was at. I would have been nailed probably like four times if they didn't hit me from an angle with a rifle. But, um, fucked up my mom's car. Trust. <laughs> and we got caught and busted. I straight up, I had to lie to my mom, told her that, oh, I don't know what the fuck happened to the car. I woke up and it was like that. Oh, really? I mean, I don't know. I almost died on my birthday. Right. Hey, don't get any, to you mention have, the bomber thing. Do you have any idea who did it? You don't have to mention any names, but do you have an idea? I got an idea. Good. They've already been dealt with. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me ask you this question. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. But have you got either of you guys ever killed anybody? I shot a few people. Slow you around. Probably. Probably not. I don't know. Right. I've been in the car. Shit. Everybody was busting. Some okay. people dropping. I don't know if I hear anybody. <laughs> All right. Probably not. Okay. Gangs, and if you do, you know, speak on him a little bit. Just let us know about that situation. The homeboy from his neighborhood, there, pretty cool homie, passed away a couple years ago. That's why I'm not going to start a car. It's tiny love calls. Was he murdered or what happened? Straight fucking murdered. Really? They were out to get him. They had already hit him with a sh like a shotgun first. <laughs> Slow that roll. So I find I can't tell you too much. That's right. But you know, my other homeboy, Jason Storms. He pretty much just got beat to death by a bunch of cribs. They had shot him. They were out to get him too. Like they had shot him the week, like two weeks before. Went out to a party. They jumped him. They fucking beat him to death. He wasn't, he wasn't from my neighborhood, but he was the only one that I really fucking, I gave a fuck about him. Damn it, he was a bang. You know, to this day, I, you know, I love that homeboy. That was my dog. Right. What about you? You have any uh, homeboys? Or homegirls, some, some, some of y'all. They mentioned the homeboy Bear. Okay. That's my time. Rest in peace. Capone. My homeboy Casper's cousin. Not to forget. Capone's Casper's cousin? Capone's Casper's cousin. Bear Capone. A Vario I don't like to mention, but my homeboy Sad Boy. Cartoon from the TikToks. And the rest of the Vatos that I forgot to mention. When I see a picture of your name struck up on the wall, I remember you. How did your mother feel about you being in the gang? Or your past life, and, 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 you know, banging? My mom tries to act like it never happened. It's cute. She she swears I'm not from a gang, but she knows. She has to. I've had, she's already known I had like two guns since I was 15. She knew about them all. I don't know. She's not. I mean, this day, even, we day, 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 even twin brothers. Before. Even twin brothers. She just, she, she'll swear to you that I'm not from the gang, but she, I know she knows. Right. Mom looks out. There's nothing you can say to uh. her mom. What are you gonna tell her? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm forever. 
sorry for getting your son killed. Right. Or being with him when he got shot. There ain't shit you can do. Or say, really. You gotta sit there and just listen to all that, what's going through their parents' mind, minds, really. A lot of gang members, you know, they lose dead homies all the time, but what if a person's mother was killed as a result of them being in a gang? That happens too. That happens too. Wouldn't that be something that's powerful enough to make you stop being in a gang, knowing that you know, no, it is. You just don't do that shit. Leave it alone. Well, I say it would be. You just don't do that shit, just leave it alone. But then again, it might make you want to go back and ride on them for us. Right. You might wind up just killing a couple heads because of that, too. Because who somebody knows? Who knows? It could go either way. You never know if I feel people might take shit one way and do it another way. Right. Huh. right. If you could say one thing to the, to the young generation about being in gangs, what would you say? I tell them like I always tell them, it ain't worth it. The gangsters then did that time. The rest is just living your own, making money. Best way you can. Right. It's hard it, in the places you live, like my neighborhood. What would you say to all the little young kids out there who are considering being in a gang? What would you say to them? What message would you give them? That's probably not the right choice. I mean, if you want to be on the edge, that's what you guys are doing. You could die, you could live, whatever. But I think it's the work. Try to find a legal way to make money and so you leave. At least do that. I mean, like, you got to work, really. That's what I'm doing. I make good money already. So I don't have to sell drugs no more. I mean, I used to get funny quarter pounds and shit. Why? I don't need to do that anymore to make that money. So you were... So I work, dude, and you fucking you want to advance. You go to school, dude, you got to do it. You be a gangster and still go to school. That shit happens these days. It ain't worth it. You want to go out like Al Capone, fucking go out like Al Capone. It ain't worth it. It's not fucking... I guess you have to job. And fucking live the right life. What What are the pitfalls of being being in a gang? Yeah, to tell, talk to the youngsters. Look at the I've been camera. Shot at, I don't even know how many times I've been shot at in the last couple years. I mean, I could have died on any one of them fucking times. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Dude, life can end like that. It's just over. That's it. I've come fucking fuck. There's no more banging. Dude, I've almost been dead so many times. I can't even fucking tell you about them all. Dude. Only gangsters. I'm one of the last ghetto vets you'll see. There's no more bang. There's no more banging. What's the what the fuck you banging for? For money? Stay off it. You don't bang for that bullshit. You hustle. Yeah, you wanna smoke them trees? You need to get your hustle out. You wanna make them jeans? You better get your hustle out. You wanna feel the breeze, man? You better get your hustle out. Cause we coming strong like that, you know. We don't stop. We gonna keep hustling. I mean, do what you want to do, really, that's in your heart, but I'm about making money one way or the other. At first, that was my choice, but okay. I, had, I had the game made to make my money, basically, because I needed somebody on my back. Okay. Out there slaying rocks and shit by myself at like 15 years old, shit like that. But now I can work. I'm 18. Fucking, yeah, I dropped out of high school to get a job, but fuck, I'm getting paid though. What year did you drop out of school? 11th grade. You ever think about going I was in 11th grade. I was supposed to go to 12th. Never got an F in none of my grades in classes. But I was a couple points low from making 12th grade. I dropped out. I had a ride rolling, everything. But it's, I miss it. So you say that you... Go to school. I wish I can go back to school back to that school like I was, just quick. Now you gotta enroll, you gotta pay just to go to college. It's too much, we can't do it. Is there any regret that you have about uh, being in the gang? Where do you think you could have been, say, you know, if you would have got started on a college five years ago 
you have any idea what you could have been by now? Do you have any regrets? Nah, I don't have no regrets about my life at all. Really. I mean, I'm happy where I'm at. Okay. I know I'm, I don't know. I'm satisfied with, with everything that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. I feel fucking strong. Get I'm strong in my heart. I, I, you know? I, I get less than a fuck, dude. If I what heart, somebody I, thinks. Fuck what they think, dude. I make Except my for money, family. I live my life, dude. I know I'm down for me and my woman, whatever. It's all about your family. I will not take back anything that I've been through because it'll change what I have. It'll change my kids. It'll change my brother. It will affect my whole life. And that would be like living over again. I'm satisfied. I'm still here. Right. 25. It's my two kids, J little Jason and my Miha Gloria. Don't look at daddy and follow him, because it's a fucked up life. I'm disabled and banging. I don't see them that often, but I would never want them to live the lifestyle I live. Because I'm still struggling. I'm 25. Look at me. I started gang banging at a, a very young age. More or less wanted to be something big. I wanted to grab a name for myself. I just felt curious about the gang life and decided that's what I wanted to do. They're not really trying to, to fix the problem. They're just adding to it. I had the FBI kicking in her door when I was 17 years old looking for me. Fuck this bullshit. I'm into game banging, gambling, selling dope, doing all kind of shit, hustling for money. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, it's about 18th Street, man. 18th Street, nigga, what's happening? I was a very, very much of a daredevil as a youngster, as a child, and in the neighborhood growing up, these are the people we looked up to, and these were our heroes. The gang members that were coming in and out of prison, and these were our heroes, so this is who we wanted to be like. So we started following in their footsteps. It was in my blood. I ran away from home at the age of 13 years old. I left my, all my brothers and sisters in a broken home because I wanted the gangster lifestyle, and I wanted to party, I wanted to cruise, I wanted to, I wanted the violence, I liked the, the thrill it gave me to, to be somebody, making a reputation, you know, uh, getting respect, but after a while, man, that started wearing down on me, you know, I hurt a lot of people and did a lot of things, and I, I could feel that sooner or later I had to make a change, that he's either going to get killed, go to prison for all the rest of my life, or something was going to happen, eventually everything was going to come back on me. Guys that I grew up with, guys that I went to school with, you know, they, they were dying because of other gangs. They were dying because of drug overdoses. You know, they were dying at the hands of the sheriff's department. You know what, I understand uh, that it's even rougher than what it was when I used to be gang banging and running in the streets. I got stabbed the first time when I was 14. I got involved in a gang fight. And, you know, things happened. I got stabbed, been shot at, and I've done the same to other people. How many of your homies been killed? Last count. Getting worse and worse. As I can recall, when I was 16, 15 years old, and I walked through the neighborhood today, there's every other block, there's just some different neighborhood. There's, there's gangs everywhere. And no gang member likes another gang member, period. It's growing and it's getting more intense and it's getting more um, to the point where people just don't care about who's who anymore. They get an Uzi and shoot anybody. Man, I've been banging since I was like 13 years old, man. So it's like, um, 
to me, this shit ain't, it, it don't scare me no more because I didn't been through that shit, all kind of shit. I've been to drive-bys, I didn't been to all kind of shit, you know? I got shot four times. I've been, and I got shot at four times in front of my house, my driveway. I got shot up, yeah, so what? I'm still alive though, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming back for y'all motherfuckers. You know, now it's all about killing, it's all about shooting and, and and when it wasn't like it was in my days when we used to uh, just jump on somebody and just beat them up and stuff, you know, and kick them and everything. But now it's it, it's more more violent, you know, and just people, their life don't mean anything to nobody, you know. They just rather kill you and get it over with. <laughs> Kids that are in gangs, they're, like I said, they're in gangs because, you know, there's a lack of attention, you know, and, you know, the kids ain't going to tell you that, you know, they ain't, they want attention, but if you give a, if you give a youngster attention, you see the change that, that he makes. Like, for example, like I was telling you about my daughter, you know, ever since I've been, you know, around her, showing her that somebody cares, you know, and, and just lifting her up, you know, um, she's been, she's been acting really well. You know, she's improved dramatically. I started out hanging around with the Florence boys way back then, but then my brother got into 18th Street and they were, you know, enemies back then and he told me that, you know, it was out of the question for me to get into Florence, so I ended up getting into 18th Street. It just seemed like the thing to do, you know, because, um, you know, you had a, you know, fellowship with, you know, people like, you know, that were just as crazy as you were, you know what I mean? You make a lot of enemies. If you go out to hurt somebody, you're going to do it to the fullest extent because you don't want them coming back to you. So, it, uh, and a lot of times it's a kill or be killed situation. You see, it's like this, man. If you don't take the nigga out, that nigga gonna come after your ass. So you gotta show that nigga who you are. Uh, I remember we were at a party one time, and and uh, there was there was people dancing, and one of the little homies came up to me and told me, "Come on, homes, let's go dance." And I told him, "No, nah, I'll, I'll be right back. I gotta use the restroom." All of a sudden, I just heard gunshots. And next you know, I just seen people running back and forth, and and all I can remember was turning around and seeing Tiny, my friend. My little homie laid out with the shotgun blast to the chest. He was only 15 years old. And that stuck to my mind because I always thought that that blast was meant for me. But by the grace of God, I didn't get that blast. Tiny got it. Good partners of mine are dead today. You know, uh, four years ago, I lost my brother through an act of violence. You know, I just talked to him four days before he died. and. Uh, you know, it hurts because he's already like out of the scene, but because of the violence of hate, you know, you know, somebody had enough, you know, uh, didn't care and just killed him and shot him. You know, uh, it, it, it's hard. You, there's no, there's no easy way to deal with death. What happened to him? Yeah. He was walking out the uh, some place right where he was at by a swami. He was kicking it. Somebody just rode up on him. And my homeboy had it. Did y'all ride? Did y'all retaliate? Everybody does. You got a homeboy that passed away. You got anger. So you know you're mad because they took your homeboy away. What you gonna do? Try to ride back. When you lose somebody close to you, it takes a lot out of you. Yeah, you get angry and you want to retaliate and you know what, you're gonna pay them back. But you know that's why the gang lifestyle goes on. The gang violence is going on because we're always paying back for something that somebody did. Well, um, yeah, you know, when I, when I was growing up, uh, you know, out there gangbanging and stuff, uh, I made a lot of enemies, you know, I seen a lot of my friends die, and that just got me more angrier and made me strike out more against people, and I ended up burning so many bridges, there's, there's so many places that I can't go to, you know, because, you know, as soon as they hear that, you know, that, that as soon as they hear my name, you know, they're gonna... Because I was like, I was like a, back then I was like a wanted man, you know. Now I got protection of God around me, 
you know, but but uh, back then I was like a wanted man and a lot of names, you know, because I was, I was doing a lot of bad things. Being involved in the gangs and, and, and being a part of that, you know, you never know what, what, what's going to come up, you know, you never know what's really going to happen. And, you know, I could have lost my life you know, at the age of 15 years old. I didn't lose mine, but somebody else lost theirs behind something that really didn't even make sense. I lost a lot of friends. I know a lot of homies that are gone today through overdoses, through diseases, through uh, being killed, being snuffed out. You know, and uh, it's, it's sad because, you know, you could be here one day and the next day you're gone. We used to risk our lives just to kill other people for a name, which is totally ridiculous. Any motherfucking car going in that neighborhood is not known, that motherfucker's getting blown now. It took me years to realize that. It took me years to realize that, you know what, Florencia is just a name. I don't own it. I don't pay taxes on it. It's just a name. Where you black at? Right now. There. I'm on the maldito side of town. <laughs> What are you guys? That's Malditos Tan over there. Uh -huh. what, what is that? What does that mean? What? Malditos? Yeah. That's the clique. The clique. Well, what does it mean? I mean, for, for people that don't speak Spanish. Like, like evil people, like crazy it's people. Chivious. Chivious people. You know, like people that just writers just want to just put the smash on. And that's it. So do they do their own? Huh? Do they do their own? Yeah, we do like, we do anything. You know what I'm saying? We, we do, do anything. It works. Like, we're the ones that are taking care of this side. You know what I'm saying? We're on the borderline. It's our hood. We're the ones that are spreading out the hood over there. We're, 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 patrolling, the, 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 we're patrolling the borderline. Fuck yourself! Yeah. Putos? Tell them. No. Yeah, she'll tell them. She'll tell off the, uh, my enemies away. She'll call, tell them off too, and uh, she knows I'll tell them off. She be hearing all that shit. She be like, hey, daddy, they go them putos. I go, yeah, baby. She know what time it is. My thug, like, I think that the media really attacks the gangs, you know, they see a lot of the stuff on the media, they see these movies, and, and a lot of times these movies, and even the, the news media, they, they glorify them. But we begin to party, we begin to get loaded, and one thing led into another, you know, and uh, fight broke out, and you know that's one of the things that when you're in the gangs and in the, in the life of partying and stuff, you know that. I mean, when a fight breaks out, it doesn't matter who's there or what it is, you know. But in this situation, my life was almost taken, and one of the homeboys got killed, and it was all behind. Nothing, really. They see the lifestyle, they see maybe their uncles or their cousins or their friends or neighbors, you know, rolling out in their 64s and all their homies and they like that lifestyle and they want to be a part of that. You know, I can't say it's all bad because I look back and there was a lot of good times, but it doesn't last. I'm 15. Oh, okay. How many tattoos you got? Most of those kids that are in gangs, they're, like I said, they're in gangs because you know, there's a lack of attention, you know? And, you know, the kids ain't gonna tell you that, you know, they, ain't, they want attention, but if you give a, if you give a youngster attention, you'll see the change that, that he makes. So how about you to be gang members too? Oh, hell no. But if it happens, it happens, you gotta love him anyway. You can't just, oh, well, you know what I mean? I mean, that's all my son knows. That's how we did it. That's how we did it. We learned, I learned from my dad and from, you know, my uncles or whatever. Hopefully my son don't learn from that, but that's what happened then. I'm not gonna push him away, you know? I'll tell him it's wrong, and if you don't listen, then there's nothing I can do about that. Give out to the family, you know? Dad, son, you know, grandson. Yeah. Ah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on. No, but I want my kids to be alive. Why? I want to see them better. That's, that's not a way to live. But everywhere you go now, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's not just centered anymore, you know? There but you're not no, gonna be around your hood if you go away. Yeah. But, so if you move to another hood, they're gonna end up getting in that neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like that's everywhere. So what? So so what's her, what, what? What you gonna do for your kids, man? Oh, man.
tell the truth, my kids, I worry about them, but they're going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? Cause they still, I still got my people looking out for them in case I'm not there for them. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, okay. Do you weigh the odds, like prison and... Yeah, it depends if you're thinking about it. If you don't think, if you're crazy and you don't think, you just going to push it in the head. You know? You know what I'm saying? You're going to do it, just take the consequences and just handle your shit. That's what I do. Well, you know, somebody that's getting out of jail, getting out of prison, I think they just need to look at their life, you know. Um, you know, they got an opportunity now to start all over got an opportunity to, you know, op go through a fresh door. There's a lot of bad things that did in the past. There's a lot of things that they can't change in the past. It's just, they got to look at life as a new opportunity to, uh, to be successful, to, you know, uh, to get their life together. Because if they go back, most likely they're not going to ever get out again. I spent all my 20s and my early 30s in the prison system. I got released two years ago. While I was in prison, Numerous people have died. People I've done drugs with, died of AIDS. People that I used to gang bang with got killed. Some people went to prison and, and they're never getting out. And them again, they're them other ones I, I feel real bad for now, their families. I was over there in the county, they treat you like fucking dogs and shit, that motherfucker. They signed too, they got you under control. Just the fucking number. You know, 16 years old in the youth authority, 18 years old, I ended up in the state penitentiary, and, you know, all my life, I was just growing up too fast. We in the pen, every fucking 18th Street is riding all these motherfuckers, because they, they showing them, they showing them election who they are, what kind of motherfucking gangbangers we are. We gangsters. Santa says gangsters, you know what I'm saying? 18th Street to the heart. And I got the niggas, the blood, you know what I'm saying? I got the red hat, I got my... My red shirt, because you know what? I was the pen bloods too, because they always there for me. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool like that. As far as the prison life goes, it's very serious. You you were involved um, in the prisons I was in. You were involved with people who uh, kill you just as soon as look like look at you, and which I became being around them people. When you're dealing with people like that, it's hard it's hard to keep your morals intact. It's hard, you, you know, especially when you don't care yourself. What's the difference between black gangs and Hispanic gangs? Uh, sometimes, like, yeah, sometimes just the colors. Sometimes they cross out, you know, Florence, Florence cross out. So what's the difference? The difference is that we got a lot of discipline. I'm not saying that the black gangs don't got a lot of discipline, but you know I'm saying we got a lot of rules. You can't do. Well, who do you guys get along with? Nobody. Nobody. We, we, we hate it, but all oh, and loved by few. I've been game making since I was 14. I live around here all my life. I used to live right here in front of the park. I used to see all the game makers kick around here, so that's how I got it. I like being from Florence. It's fun. You be getting down with the enemigas and everything. With the trans, the cheese size, and the reds, you know. <laughs> you want to, you want to, you know, you're saying you can get a job, get a job. You can't, you hustle it. You can't, Rob. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever you can to get that money. Right. That's the way you got to do it, hustle it. You get into it and you get in it. You into it. You can't get out. You can't look. You've done too much to go go back. How many generations gangsters got now? Too many. We we ain't ever gonna stop. Not in South Central. At least not here. This is South Central. Time keep going higher and higher here. And we over here in the ghetto part of town. You know what I'm saying? They got over there the suburbs and everything. They just banging on suburbs. You know what I'm saying? We over here in the ghetto. What do you say to the next generation, man? To the youngsters. Huh? What you say to the youngsters? Yeah, I am a youngster. Shit. Huh. I don't condone what we doing shit. You know what I'm yeah. But you know what? We can't. We ain't nobody telling them what or what not to do and shit. You know what I'm My heart was so hard that I once had a celly when we were in the park and shoe, and I crushed his throat. And then I had no remorse. I walked by him laughing, and hey, all right, check this dude out. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. And 
I, I, I regret it now. I don't, you know, at the time you don't regret it because that's the lifestyle you're living. You know, it's either him or you, and that's it. You, know, you have there's no remorse. I mean, it was just uh, that type of lifestyle that I chose. You know, it it uh, it began to affect the way I was because, you know, even at that age, I, I had a, a wife and a kid, but. I didn't care. I really didn't care about them. You know, the only thing I really cared about was myself. And, you know, and, and, and my thing was just to stay high, just, just, you know, do whatever I wanted to do. But, you know, I really didn't understand that how it was affecting my, my children. And, and My uncle, he got killed. Uh, that really made me think a lot. And I remember also my cousin getting killed from gang violence. Then I started hearing of my homeboys, a tight homeboy of mine, man. He was in my wedding, and, you know, uh, he overdosed on drugs. And it starts making you think, you know, is this worth it? Have you shot anybody? Oh, man, look, man. Man. Oh, it's like, you always got to come to something like that. You always got to cross into something you don't want to do, but you got to handle your business. You know, like... Man, I'm going to put it this way. Like two days ago, man, I was in the hood. All right, I'm in the hood. You know, I'm over at my mom's house. I have my kids and shit. These motherfuckers going to soup up on me and shit. Hey, we had, we're handling our business. You see, these motherfuckers going to start doing the pussy work. You know what I'm saying? Bring the shit out, trying, you know. These motherfuckers start out with, you know, they, they had shit on me. I had to bring my shit out and start dumping. You know what I'm saying? Show them who I am. Because if you're going to take the shit out, it's because you're going to use it. Otherwise, what the fuck you got it on you for? Hey, you know what the way it is in the neighborhood today when you get killed you know all they're gonna do is you know throw you a car wash and you know uh, put a tattoo of your name on your shoulder and you know life's gonna go on man it's gonna go on it ain't gonna end i got tired of of, of just you know what just the same old same old drugs jail drugs jail and it's, it seemed like each year that went by I was attending more and more funerals. You go to a funeral and you hear a mom weeping over the coffin, man, crying because, you know, her son got killed. Man, he was just hanging out where the homies are. And he took these drugs, man, and he took too much, and he's dead today. And, the, you know, and the little girl's crying, or the, the son's crying, and, and his family's broken. There's nothing more hurtful than hearing a family heart break because they lost someone that, that they love so much. Some neighborhoods, that shit ain't right what they doing. They put the little homies, the little youngsters, 12-year-old little kids, do all this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? That shit ain't right. You know, we got to look out for these little youngsters. You don't want to be in my situation where you're looking back at all the years that you wasted, you know? You want to, you know, like all those years, you know, my daughter grew up without me and stuff like that. And, and that stuff just, it, it wretches, wretches at your heart, man. And you just need to... You just need to get right, man, and, and try to try to be the best that you can be. I'd ask them if they're tired. I'd, I'd ask them if they're tired of, of the gang violence. I'd ask them if they're tired of, of the drug abuse. I would, I'd ask them if they're tired of being hurt and, and burned all the time. I'd advise them to get out of whatever you're in, you know. Really, you know, you tried everything else, try God, you know what I mean? It just leads to death and destruction. It just leads to drug uh, uh, addiction. It just leads to jail. Well, it's just another night, just kicking it late. Rolling through the barrel of the south side, F jail, on the point down, no rolling deep. We fight it so I'm about to feel good, they be. They were crossing the street, oh, it's long sin. Just sit my switch and I'm long sin. But then Chabala, we just left this line. We just bust the ride to the south side. I like how you 59 with the home stay wicked. The two parts where I sometimes kick it. What are the FC rules kicking back next day? You know, with her six captain with a fine face. And how do I pick up without my knife? Try to pull it or trigger back, boots and damn punk. Motherfuckers go back to your food You try and pay bucks I'm not around getting packed I'm in love with your yarn The battle sent me up That's said where you from I said south side La forense se aprese Maldito loco You can't visit this ese I've been blessed with the job And when I first got this job I didn't want it you know, What I want to work for I was working for $6 an hour That was two years ago I got this job I worked hard and I did everything as if I was doing it for the Lord. 
Last week they promoted me and I'm making now $15 an hour. And I was considered to be a testimony. God's testimony. And I don't care who you are, what you've been through, that you can do it. It's up to you. You have a job. You decided to focus on your on uh, success and money and not so much in the banging. How do you how do you I just work construction, it keeps me strong. Okay. I have fun with it. I, I don't like to sit in the office or nothing. Okay. And you get paid good, you fucking. Yeah, paid decent. So, will you see yourself in five years? Huh? Five years? I see myself working, homie. <laughs> I just barely got out, homie, doing six years. I'm trying to get a job, but I can't. And if you get blessed with the job, I don't care what this job is, don't go in there sniveling about how hard the work is because it, if you want a real job, then you go work that job and then you go to night school and get you an education, then you go get you the job that you want. So don't go in there sniveling and expect anybody to hand you nothing because nobody owes you anything. Let me ask you this. Where do you see yourself in five years from now? Representing still to Repre the heart. Representing to the your public. neighborhood? Always. So, yeah. Always. Definitely. Always. Do you think gangbang will ever end? Uh, oh, no. Never. Never. Too many of us. Too many of us. It just keeps going and going. Gang. You know what I'm saying? Generation. So many generations gangsters got now. Uh, we, we ain't never gonna stop. I'm yeah. never gonna end, homie. And I'll tell you what, what you because mean, every dog? time you watch TV, there's so many gangbangers that make it look pretty. That's now right. you just got the cops trying to gangbang The more they say to stop banging, <laughs> the more we're gonna bang. And it ain't, ain't never gonna stop. Now you... I think, I don't think it's ever gonna end, but I think today they got a lot more opportunities for kids to, to get out of gangs and to change than they did when I was growing up. When I was growing up, it was either go to jail or just move away. But, uh, not like today. Gangbang ever in for you, man? Huh? Nah, I don't think so. I don't know. Oh. Man, I ain't got no answer for that, you know what I'm saying? Well, gangbang ever in for you. <laughs> Yeah, to the end. But I, I won't stop representing. You know what I'm saying? That's where the game goes. It ends, but you never stop representing. He knew that. They're like that, and they never gonna stop. That's it. So I go until we die, he homie. It. Just because he died don't mean they ain't gonna stop. Homie's gonna keep rolling. I bless you now. I'm not involved in that. <laughs> Jack, we do it an hour, we do it for the sake